many of you had a good week? Well, if you didn't have a good week, just make it a good one anyway. Because it's up to you. Uh, let's see, let me make a couple of things to get us all welcome here. First of all, I hate football. <laughs> There's, there is no stress in the pastor, but when you're a football fan, it's, it's terrible. It's, I hate it. Now, I'll probably like it next week, but I hate it this week. So, Frank, uh, Frank is, where's Frank? Oh, Frank is disappointed. Is, uh, Mike is not here yet, is he? Mike Raymond? Uh, how many of you went to the Night of Hope last night? Did y'all see that motorcycle out there? Well, Frank was supposed to win that. And Mike was supposed to have it parked out here this morning in front for Frank, but it's not there. So, Frank, I'm assuming we didn't win. I guess Frank don't get to ride his motorcycle. So, anyway, that was I guess Mike dropped the ball on that one. Mike's probably riding it. Yeah, he probably is. Well, I'm going to tell you, folks, I'm, I'm glad you're here. And uh, I want you to relax. And I want you to, to quit worrying about the things that you've been worried about. And I know I know it's normal for us to stress. I understand that because I do it too. But let's just put all that away this morning. We're going to relax and, and enjoy Jesus and enjoy each other and have a good time worshiping King Jesus today. So I am thrilled that y'all are here. God bless y'all. Let's have a good time together. All right, church, before we get started, I've got a question for all of you. How many of your lives, by show of hands, have been radically changed because of grace, hope, love, and mercy? When you find yourself talking about this change, what is the one thing that it always goes back to? For many of us in this room today, it's the story of how we were brought to the CCMP family. But at the very center of that story is our sweet Jesus. Our story is really about how Jesus drew us all here together to be a family that mirrors the image of Christ, extending grace, mercy, love, and victory over the enemy. Would you join us today as we praise our Savior and sing my story? Oh 
define us, but grace should be what defines us. That's our story. We're going to go to prayer time now. I really appreciate everybody being here today. And uh, Bryson, you going to do prayer time for us today? Good, buddy. Come on up. I almost do y'all. And uh, we're going to have to get us a new section in the service. Uh, is Maul here? Ma, Ma here is here. Ma's having surgery tomorrow. I want to mention some things. Uh, Ma is having surgery tomorrow. Is this a is this a knee replacement? Yes. Yes, knee replacement. So Ma's gonna get a new knee, and so that's in the morning. And we want to pray for her. Uh, we're gonna need a new section called the rehab section. Because <laughs> a uh, week from tomorrow, John, you're gonna get you a new. One. A week from Tuesday, John's going in for surgery. Frank's going in that week also. Monday, a week from Monday. And uh, so we're just going to have this little rehab section. Uh, Mark's going to back into his rehab time. He's been up and around and doing good. So uh, we're going to go to prayer. And there's one other thing I want you to pray about today. Bryce is going to help us and lead us in prayer today. Uh, right now, Penny and Lynn... Uh, who are both in our church are are ministering in the prison up at is it in Troy? Yes. Yeah, in Troy, and they are ministering to ladies that are incarcerated, and they do this this weekend. It's called Kairos, and so I want us to pray for them this morning as well. They'll conclude that weekend of ministry to the ladies there in the prison, and and I want to pray for them. And we're going to let you know more about that in the future because we're all going to get even more involved in that ministry. It's a great ministry, but. Um, let, let me ask you this. If there's something that you are uh, facing maybe this week, either a physical thing or, or just some, something that is on your mind, on your heart, that you would like for us to pray about, would you just raise your hand if there's something? Wow, we got lots of things to pray about. And uh, so we love our, our prayer time today. Christine is, has not been with us for a while. She is actually with her, she says right over here, with her son. She's helping take care of him as he gets better. And she misses y'all. She wants y'all to know she misses you. And so we want to pray for her as well. So I'll ask my associate Bryson to come and he's going to help us with prayer time today. So we were just talking about that rehab section. And I feel like just like Michael Jackson says in the song, you are not alone. So I will not be the only disabled person here next week. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we were talking, like Brother David said, he made a good segue into what I was going to talk about. Last week we talked about David and Goliath, right? So, you know, David, this big underdog, defeats Goliath. I feel like we have Goliaths uh, every day. Amen. We deal with something. Right. Um, and Jesus, you know, he had a big Goliath too, and that was death, which he defeated. Um, about a week ago, I was supposed to come up here and do prayer time for Mr. Walter. Uh, he's not here this week, so he wanted me to come up here this week and do it, but he was able to step in because I was going through a Goliath. You know, I was fighting my Goliath. I had a good friend of mine who I've known for years named Justin Elrod. He had uh, he has what I have to show us dystrophy. And he sadly passed away last week. Um, the good news was, you know, he, he did pass away uh, during while he was sleeping. But I just I wasn't strong enough. I, I, I didn't feel like I could come up here and really do prayer time because I just I went that whole week thinking about it and nothing was hitting me. Until, you know, like Jeopardy. You know how you watch Jeopardy and then they do a question and they answer it and you learn something you didn't know? Or you learn something new every time? That's what kind of Brother David did last week with me talking about David and Goliath. And so that really put something on my heart was that I was going through my Goliath um, and God helped me through it after that message. Uh, Justin was saved. So he is up there with Christ, and knowing him and his personality, I could just imagine him going and saying, Death, where's your sting? You ain't got me. You're not going to beat me. And he would also probably say, His chair is faster than death, so he would outrun them. But um, I, I just want to go in and just pray real quick 
And for anybody who's going through any Goliaths, I'm going to pray for you. And you're going to defeat it because you have your church family and you have God that's watching over you. So, let us pray. Dear God, I come to you today, Lord, and just my heart pours out to you, Lord, just to thank you for all the blessings that you have given this great church that we get to come to every Sunday, Lord. Today is an excellent, it's an awesome, it's a great day, Lord, that we can get to come out here to church and just get to worship and praise your name, Lord. All the people that are going through rehab and have surgeries coming up in the next week or the next two weeks, be with them, Lord. We pray for successful surgeries and we just pray that they have a speedy recovery, Lord. Also pray for all the people who raise their hands, who have something that they're going through, they're facing their Goliath. Lord, please put your hands on them and just be with them, Lord, which I know you will help take care of their situation, Lord. While those the great ladies are going up to the prison to uh, talk to people who are there, Lord, just let them be able to uh, worship you, Lord, and know how great your grace is, Lord. I also pray that you continue to put your hand on this church, Lord, while we could be going into a new building, Lord, just be with us. Uh, and just thank you for letting us have this great day to worship you and let us continue to praise your name in the utmost uh, authority, Lord. Bless your name, amen. Me and Bryce are going to get us a bus. We'll go on the road. <laughs> I'll drive. <laughs> I want that section to be called the disabled section, not the rehab section. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why he's my associate. You understand? You understand how that works. Okay, uh, let me make this, make some announcements. Get your bulletin out. Take that out to the to the color page. It's my favorite. And so let me highlight a couple things. It really, really was a good week. Uh, last night at the Night of Hope was a wonderful time. Uh, really great turnout. They were amazed at how many and uh, I'm sure it was effective in raising some money for the whole project and my, my friend Farrell who, Farrell will probably be with us next Sunday and I'll let him share a uh, real quick report about what's going on in Nicaragua and our, our people have been there, our missions team have been there, we built a church there. So it was a great night last night. Thanks for all the fixed desserts and came and, and cooked and just, uh, it was really good. Thank you for that. It's awesome. Um, a couple things. Tonight is a little bit different. Tonight at 6 o'clock is the youth group, as always, and it's also, uh, it's normally prayer planning. Well, well, we'll still meet at 6, but I'm going to do something different tonight. And we're going to do, we have a brand new ministry that we're going to kick off this fall in our church. It's called the Network Ministry. And for all of you who have been contacted about being a, a leader in our network ministry, we will do training tonight at 6 o'clock at the bar. So everybody that's involved in that network ministry, I need you there at 6. It won't be long. And, and now, if everybody else, you're also invited. If you, if you have not been contacted about that ministry, it will be our normal Sunday night time. So... Everyone is invited tonight, 6 o'clock at the barn. If you have teenagers, bring them there for the youth group, 6 o'clock. And uh, that is tonight. Very important. And uh, it'll be really, really neat time. Also, um, our, all of our music and worship and choirs and orchestras, all of those rehearsals are today as well. Same time, Joy. All right, same time, same place. Uh, this coming weekend, place weekend. This is our final Place Weekend of 2017. So if you have not been through Place Weekend, you, we really would encourage you to do that. Um, Sue, do we, do, are you good? Do, do you need anybody to confirm? Or you, you got everybody lined up with that? I, I have um, one couple that I need to confirm with. Everybody else I've confirmed with. Um, All right. Alright, so if you have questions about Place Weekend, Friday night, 
Saturday, you come see Sue at the break or after the service. And if you would like to get in on it, you really need this last one of the year, so I really need you to get in on the place. The place we can. Next Sunday, we have a real special program plan. We have a musical production by our music team, and uh, it will be called Unstoppable. So don't miss next Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Uh, two weeks from yesterday is our next men's breakfast, September 30. Uh, Carol, I believe Carol has an announcement now as well from our ladies' ministry. There she comes. Thank you. <coughs> supplies to Mount Pleasant Elementary, Mount Pleasant Middle, and Mount Pleasant High School, and they have given us a wish list, and we can't do this by, our, by ourselves, so we're asking for donations, and those things are Kleenexes, hand sanitizer, antibacterial wipes, Ziploc bags, copy paper, colored copy paper, and that's in light or bright colors, either one. And if you're a teacher and you know something they need, stick it in there. And um, I have bought three boxes and have brought two of them over here today, plastic containers. And if you brought something today, go ahead and stick that in. If not, next Sunday's our last collection day. But uh, Miss Sharon Burr is being very optimistic along with myself and I'm sure the other ladies. We're hoping to fill more than those three boxes and share with other schools that are represented here in our church. So um, thank you so much and uh, bring our supplies for us. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, we are the community church of Mount Pleasant. That means we are part of this community intentionally. So uh, please, the, that announcement is also in the bulletin. Pick up some supplies. I know some folks brought some things today, but next Sunday, let's wrap that up and let's show the Mount Pleasant Elementary School, the Middle School, and the High School. Let's show them our support and our encouragement and our love, okay? All right, uh, last thing I have for you before we go to the break is this. I want to talk about this jar. You might know what this jar is. Next jar. It is a her self-sealing trademark mason jar, right? Have any, have any of you ever used these? Yeah. Sue, what do you use these for? Candy. Or what do you put in here? Sweet coin. Sweet tea. Sweet tea. Okay, that works. <laughs> That's what I put in here. <laughs> Man, I remember these were all over our farm and it was a good thing that you have lots of these because there was, that means mama was canning. And there was always good. Now she had that big old pressure cooker. Remember that big, big, and and you seal it. And I'm thinking it's going to blow up and explode and, and destroy the world. But anyway, the wonderful things. Well, let me tell you about this jar. This is a unique jar. We, we didn't. Let me tell you the story about this jar. There's a lot of things going on in the life of our church. It's been a, an amazing journey. We started in a barn. Most of you know, some of you were there. When we started, we met around a little fire pit and prayed and, and asked the Lord to help us to determine if we should do this church. And, and He said, let's do it. And we started and people started coming and we filled up the barn and then we moved to this school. And we've grown and continue to grow and we're, we're nearing capacity here at the school. And, and God has sent so many of you wonderful, amazing people capable people who love the Lord. And He sent you here to help build this church. And there's possibilities for us in the future. Uh, we've had two meetings in the last two weeks. Monday night we met with the, the city council commissioners. I'm sorry, the commissioners. And so everything is approved. Looks good for us to pursue the lease, which is the Tuscarora Mills in town. And there are two buildings over there that, actually three, that we may have the potential of using. And everything looks good. All systems are go. So in the new, near future, you're going to hear progress reports on that next move. So the barn, and the school, and the mill, and eventually we have some property out on Highway 73. 26 beautiful acres. Well, uh, Tuesday, um, 
myself and a couple other guys in our church met with uh, a, an individual, a businessman. He's a grader and he does lots of those kind of work, that kind of work. And uh, we met out there and on the property and we walked around and we looked at the drawings and the site plans and, and we walked back in the back part of the woods where the, the, the new building will eventually be, Lord willing. And uh, I was just listening to this guy because he was a very, very proficient, well-known person in this part of the country. And he was really smitten by, by what God had done and what God was doing. And he was really amazed by our property. And he thought, wow, this, you guys, this is, this is really special. This is, this is what God has done is really special. And he said, man, you guys have done, he was extremely complimentary about how our teams have done such great work preparing us for this, for this process. He said, you guys have done a great job with everything. And, uh, and we prayed. We knelt and we prayed. And it, it, you know, God met with us. And so we were walking out and he walked over. And he, he came back with this. He walked over, there's an old building over there on the property. And he came back with this. And it had all dirt and grass and stuff in it. It was kind of gross. And he said, yeah, uh, look at here. Look what we found on your property. And, and he had shared an experience that he had about some previous things. And I said, well, let me see that job. I said, this is going to help me. This will help remind me of all that God's done and all that God's going to do with this church, with you people out there on that property. And so here's what I'm going to do. This is going to be a reminder for me. This old basin jar that was found on our property. I washed it out a little bit. Still got some dirt and some on there, but I washed it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over here on Sundays. And, and if you want to come by and, and drop a dollar in or a quarter in or a penny in, and maybe your kids, you might want to help get your kids trained a little bit. Come by and drop a little money in there and say, what's that for? That jar is a reminder of what God has done in our ministry, what God is going to do. And, and so if you feel led to help us fill this jar up with money, because that's what it's going to take for us to get out there, so that God, I needed something that's going to remind me of how fresh and new and exciting your blessings are to us. So, and, and I don't talk about. Okay. There we go. I don't, y'all know I don't talk about money much. Because we're not about money. We don't even take an offering here. I ain't growing this up here.
know it's coming back to the Bank's got something. Come on, Bank's. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Getting all this money <laughs> from home. <laughs> wow. This was not planned. Does everybody understand? This is not scripted. We like spontaneity here at the community church, don't we? Get it? Need another jar. I don't need some more jars. We're going to have to go back to the property and see what else we can find out. <laughs> Wheelbarrow will be good. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Red. Thank you, buddy. I, I have no idea, uh, but I, I know that probably, probably, see, here's what happens. There's you move along, and you know how we all get busy in our schedules. And uh, what we don't always understand, there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes every week toward our growth and our, our movement and our building and our land. And, and you're about to see, the next few days you're going to start seeing more things. A lot of the things that have been done have been behind the scenes. And meetings and commissioners and city stuff, but you're going to start seeing some more obvious things happen. And I just wanted you to know as a church, there's a lot of things God is doing here in this church family. And God gave us this land. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And we're going to keep on following Him. And as God gives the money, we're going to go build a building. And we're going to have a place for His church. You know, your family needs a house. When y'all leave today, you're going to go eat lunch and then you're going to go home and turn your TV on and watch the Panthers, probably. In your house. Your family needs a house and our family needs a house too. This is a great house, but it's not ours. It's, it's borrowed. And we're going to have another place soon. But eventually, God may let us get into the house He wants us to build. For him, not for us. So I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave this jar over here at the break and every Sunday it'll be over there. And if y'all wanna be reminded as God has reminded me with this little jar of his blessings. Let's pray. God, you're good. You're good to, to remind us and help us and encourage us. God, you have given us twenty-six amazing acres in Mount Pleasant. And God, we believe that's where you want us to work and move toward building a building. And God, thank you for encouraging us with our children today. Lord, that, that's appropriate because this is for them. This is for them. It's for our community. Your family needs a house. Thank you for all the miracles that you've done. Thank you for so many more miracles that we haven't even seen yet. That we believe you're going to give us. God, we love you. Thank you for the time we've already had together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being patient. You can take your kids to class and we'll take a little break.
for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you, whoever does not welcome the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And taking them in his arms, he laid his hands on them and blessed them. Amen. Now, let's test everybody's science styles this morning. Everybody has science class, right? If you were in outer space and you threw a baseball in any particular direction, as long as no force acted upon it, how long would that baseball travel? Forever! Inertia! Yes. Science 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 when I was going through chemotherapy years ago, I was talking on the phone with Miss Debbie, and she had been through the cans before, and she kind of knew the ropes, and been an oncology nurse. And she said, you know, sometimes you just have to take it one day at a time, because for those of you who have been through this, you know how chemotherapy is. It's like, they tell you up front, you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days, and you know, you go for your infusions and all that stuff, and you think, okay, it wasn't too bad. What they don't tell you is, oh, by the way, you got to come back tomorrow for a shot. The shots will get you. You try to go all work all week to work and it's kind of have some sort of normal life, and then they hit you with that ungodly shot. And you know it, oh good. I worked all week, I felt horrible, and what I have to look forward to is a weekend now feeling more horrible, okay? And you have to learn to take each day for what it is. And to enjoy the good while you have it, because you know. It ain't gonna last long when you're going through all this stuff. Right, Kansas? But you know, there is coming a day when we will not live day by day. Because the Bible tells us that the word of the Lord endures what? The Bible tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and the Bible tells us that he who eats of this bread of life will live for. Stand up and sing this one.
just don't understand how much talent you got in this church. Amen. First Samuel. This is Sermon 3. This is the final sermon in our current series on the life of young David. And uh, today, it's a, it's, a different, it's a different lesson today. It's a different study. And maybe one you might not have heard a lot in church, uh, which is probably not in common with me. Um, but it's, it's about friendship today. Um, think about some of those valleys that you've been in. Think about some of those giants that you faced, like Bryce was talking about. Think about some of those... You may be in a tough spot right now. You may be facing something today, this week. There may be a, a physical challenge that you've never faced before. You know, at work, and you, you build, and you plan, and things happen that you don't expect. And the thought today is, it, it's, it's hard enough to go through those challenges when you're alone. It's hard by yourself. You need somebody with you. You need a friend. Amen. You need somebody to, to be with you and sit with you and pray with you and talk with you and just be there. Just hang out. You need somebody to go to the fair with and, and, and go to the game with and just... <coughs> Sit with in church. Be your friend. You know, it's very biblical. There's an amazing relationship that we're going to uncover for us here today in 1 Samuel chapters 18, 19, 20. I won't read all of those verses, but I want to talk to you about David and Jonathan today. We talked about, uh, first of all, when God chose David, who, who Samuel, God sent Samuel, his prophet, to anoint a new king. And it, it wasn't all the other brothers who were older and bigger and stronger and more impressive. It was David who was out in the field doing what he was supposed to do, watching his father's sheep, being obedient and submissive. And then we talked about last week how David faced the giant, Goliath. And David slew him through the power of God. God delivered him over to, to, to David. And David became a, an instant rock star. He was a hero. And today, we, we follow through verse chapter 16, chapter 17 last week, and this week, verse chapters 18, 19, 20. And, and we're talking about the life of David in those early days. Thank you for coming today. If you're, if you're our guest, uh, we, we are so honored that you're here. And I would love to invite you to come back. This, is, uh, this, this church is... It's a family. We're a family. And every Sunday is a family reunion for us. And we, we don't mind our babies crying. And we don't mind our kids. And, and in fact, the first part of our service, we call that family time. And that's because it's good for us to be together. It's not good for us to be facing life alone. God wants us to, to be together, to encourage and support. So, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, we had a new drummer today. Thanks, Paige. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't just don't take for granted our worship. Those that stand on the stage and lead us and, and give give their talents to God on the altar of worship. Uh, you guys inspire me. Thank you. Thank you for the hours of rehearsing and and for the sacrifices that you make to help us to use what God has gifted you with. And, and uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to get a bigger jar next time. That was, uh, that, that was God gave me a good reminder this week to stay on task and stay on target and, and not get complacent and not get satisfied. Keep on moving toward that which God has given us and called for us to have. And, and uh, Real excited for that. So buckle up. Next few weeks are going to be very exciting around here. First Samuel chapter 18. And I want to read the, uh, uh, the beginning passage. And I'll be alluding to several verses. I want to read all three chapters. But I would like for you to do that. I was talking to someone this week who is here today. And they were talking, helping me remember how important the Word of God is. And how important it is daily for you and I to read God's Word. Just read it. <laughs> Have a time, have a focus, have a system where you have your devotional time with God. And so, 
Maybe sometime this week you can read 1 Samuel chapters 18, 19, and 20 as you, as you follow through with this story. And please, don't just take everything I say. Just you read it for yourself. God has given you the Bible and the Holy Spirit to help you read and learn and understand. I want to just give you some thoughts and, and help you open up the truth for you as we look at it together. So, amazing passage. I want to talk to you today about David and Jonathan. Um, how many of you, and, and I remember uh, in the little town I grew up in, we, I had my little, my little buddies. You know, you grow up with your friends and maybe it's on your block or in your neighborhood or your cousins or whoever it is. And we had our little guys, and, and we would go camping and we'd go fishing. Because that's what you did in the country, and, and hunting and stuff. So we'd go hang out, and we, we became, uh, for lack of a better term, BFFs. Right? And, and, so, and then, of course, in our day, we were blood brothers. Any of y'all remember that? You, you did the... No! And you rub your fingers together, your whatever, and you and you mix your blood, which is really gross and disgusting and probably totally insanitary. But we were blood brothers, and we made promises, right? Oh, we're gonna stay. We'll be together forever. We're gonna always be best friends. And man, you know, and, and, and we'd be have our arms around each other, and we'd be fighting the next minute, you know. But we were best friends. We were buddies. Have you ever thought about why that is? Because God give us, gives us a nature that we need that. We need that. We need people in our life like that. We need, we need BFFs. We really do. And, and so there's an amazing story that God opens up this relationship to us. And I think there's so much to learn here. Chapter 18 of 1 Samuel, and I'll read the first three verses. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul, that, that the soul, soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. So Jonathan and David. Jonathan is the king's son, and David is the new hero that has just come on the scene because he won for his kingdom and he beat, the, beat Goliath and, and defeated the army of the Philistines. So, number one, I want you to see best friends. If you have your bulletin, there's a little brief outline there. and We'll follow that. First of all, point one is best friends, Jonathan and David. And it says, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. You know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a shame. Everything God gives us that's good, the world just twists it. And it perverts it and, it and it messes it up. And so God gave us an inner desire to have really, really close friends that were just, the, you know, the chemistry. You know, some people, well, we just don't get along. And then there's others that, man, we just, it just this just works. And Jonathan and David were knit at the heart. And Jonathan loved David as much as he loved his very own soul. So, first of all, we see these best friends, Jonathan and David. Verse 2, And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. This is David. David just killed a giant. And so Saul says, Man, you're coming home. You're coming. You're not going back to home, back, back to Jesse's place. Bethlehem. You're coming to the palace because you're coming to stay with me, with the king. And verse 3, Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. They made a pact. They made a promise to each other. Because he loved him as his very own soul. So, here's what you see here. The Old Testament has principles. And there's a word that is consistently used through the Old Testament. And that word is covenant. That is a promise. It's a commitment. It is a binding commitment. And, and when we do wedding ceremonies, and I've done some of your weddings here in this room, and if you remember during our premarital sessions, we talked about the marriage vows. Do you know what those really are? They're covenants. It's a covenant. And so when, when we do weddings, we talk to the bride and groom about what it means to stand in public before the preacher and God and everybody else, and you make a promise to each other. A vow, a commitment. And God in the Old Testament makes covenants with me. 
So I think it's interesting to see that two friends made a covenant together. A pact. Wow, this is pretty neat. Jonathan and David made a covenant. A promise. Because he loved him as own. Now, you, you know, you, you've got society today, you, you're, you, everything's messed up. And they're like, well, you know, if, if guys are friends, they can't be whatever. Because, you know, they, they're, it's, it's weird and, and that's, that's gay and, and it's awkward and all that. Which is really unfortunate. Because love is a, is a pure, wonderful gift from God. And it shouldn't be limited. Love is something that we can have for, for many people. Obviously, there's the love that we have for our spouse. That's the special set-apart covenant that we make before God and others. But you know what? We can, have, we can love each other as well. In a safe, wonderful, secure, helpful, God-ordained way. You need a BFF. Amen. Or two. Or three. And Jonathan and David, God brought them together, I believe, to help show us today in 2017 that we need to have friends like that in our life today. So, best friends, David is a hero at this time. King Saul ruled over the land. The Philistines had been subdued. Israel was at peace. And if you know anything about the history of Israel, which is fascinating, many, many times they, Israel's not at peace. But at this time they were. The, the Philistines had been defeated. Paul, uh, Saul was pleased with David, so he kept him at the palace. Saul's son Jonathan became his best friend. David's popularity grew. He was a rock star. I mean, oh, there he is. There he is. That's the one that killed Goliath. There he is. He was a star. Jonathan was in line to be... Okay, if your daddy's the king and you're the firstborn, guess what happens? You get to be the king after your daddy's gone in this day. So here's Jonathan, and he's the guy. And, and so you, you start to have this unique chemistry going on here in the palace. Jonathan was comfortable with David's fame and fortune. If you've got a friend, and they're not comfortable with you and how your wins go and successes, and, and, and they're jealous of you, and, and that, then you probably ought to take a look at that relationship. Jonathan was really comfortable with David being the rock star. He didn't care. He loved David because he was his friend. That was a healthy relationship. So David has this fame and fortune, and, and Jonathan was not threatened by that. And, and also, Jonathan didn't want to be buddies with David because David was a star. That wasn't his motive. He just wanted to be his friend. It worked. They liked each other. King Saul sent David over the men of war. All of the men of war. He was a captain of the army. Well, why not? He just defeated the giant, the champion from the Philistines. David never became arrogant or boastful. He remained very modest and humble. Jonathan and David both loved Israel and they loved God very much. If you're going to have a BFF, you need to have the same heart. If you love Jesus Christ and you've given your life to God, you probably ought to choose friends that have the same goals. Or there's going to be problems along the way. Jonathan and David loved Israel. They had the same heart. And they loved the God of Israel. And they were committed to that. So it worked. The basis of any relationship, husband, wife, friendships, should be the core values that you have as you believe in. If you are friends with someone who does not have the same core values that you have, it's probably not going to be a good relationship that you should pursue. Because one will affect the other in a negative way. Be careful who you make vows to, who you choose to be your BFF. Because you will either impact them, and in many cases, they will impact you in a negative way before the Lord in your relationship with God. Jonathan and David, man, they had the same heart. They became very best of friends. Saul was pleased. Saul's like, man, this is great. My son 
and the, our champion, our best buddies. This is perfect. Life is good. And, and you know what? Let me tell you another thing a, a covenant is, is good for. Let me tell you a word that's, that people don't like today. There's a word that starts with an A. And it's called accountability. You need somebody in your life besides your spouse that keeps you in line. You need that. You need a best friend that's going to have your back. Now, when somebody has your back, sometimes that means they need to kick you in the back. Side a little bit. Kick start. That's what a best friend does. And if a best friend really cares about you, and you're struggling in an area with an issue, with a relationship, and something's going on, your real best friend's going to come and say, hey, dude, I, I don't mean to be nosy, and I know this may or may not be any of my business, but you need to be careful. Amen. Because there's a yellow light flashing, and it says, slow down and proceed with caution, my friend. You need somebody like that in your life. Accountability. David and Jonathan made a covenant, an agreement to always be best friends and loyal to each other. I find this unique and amazing. And, and they went further than that. They said, we'll be kind and care for each other in our families. I'll take care of your family. You take care of my family. You know, there's, there's godfathers and godmothers. There are those kind of things. Which is biblical. To have someone in your life, maybe they're not blood, but they're like, hey, Will you, will, can we be accountable? Can you guys watch my back? If anything ever happened to me, Preach. can you take care of my family? Boy, they made a covenant. To seal, look at this, verse 4. To seal the covenant, Jonathan gave David his royal, his own royal garments, which included his sword, his bow, his shining belt, which represented royalty. And, and Jonathan loved David, his BFF, so much. He said, look, David, man, what, what is... Mi casa, su casa. What's mine is yours. Here's my stuff. Anything i got that you need, you can have it. My Preach, Father. Preach. Wow. Preach. You have somebody like that in your life? And they made a covenant. I love verse 5. I, I love the, the wording of verse 5. David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. And, and watch this next phrase. David behaved himself wisely. Do you behave yourself wisely? No. <clears throat> Not at all times. Not all the time. Now, it's good when I'm in church because, you know, it's easy to be good when I'm in church. But maybe when I'm at work or after work or Friday night and maybe I need somebody with me to keep me in line, to be my friend and to help me be accountable. And David behaved himself wisely at all times. He did everything he was assigned to do and he did it with excellence. God was with him. The women saying, Saul has slain his thousands in verse 7. And David has slain his ten thousands. David was continuing to build notoriety and success and prominence. Number two. Number one, best friends. David and John. Number two. There, there, there enters into this picture a surprise. A begrudging foe enters the drama. You know who it is? It's the king. It's King Saul. King Saul becomes the very enemy of our champion David. Watch this. This is amazing. King Saul is becoming very... You know what the J word is? Jealous. 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 Remember? Everything's good. Life is good. We're at peace. I got my boy. I got my champion. They're best friends. Life is good Amen. until you start looking around 
And all the women are singing, Oh, Saul has slain his thousands. Great Saul. But David, oh, David, he's even. I don't know why. I, I didn't write this. I don't know why the women comes in, come into the picture. <laughs> And here's old Saul, he's the king, and he's good until the women start liking David more than him. <laughs> the pride and shallowness of a man. Seriously. Seriously. That's how we are, guys. Oh, we're good as long as we're getting all the attention. Right? Amen. But, wait a minute. And he gets jealous. Mm. Mm. King Saul began to actually hate David. His champion. <clears throat> In fact, verse 10 says that an evil spirit began to torment Saul. And it overwhelmed him. And he began to keep a watch. <laughs> he kept an eye on David because he was so jealous. And Saul had to, he said, look, watch this guy. I want you to watch him 24-7. I'm like, whoa, Saul, that's David. He just saved you. I don't care. You watch him. And this spirit of jealousy grew. And it became evil and hatred. That is where jealousy will lead you. Is there somebody you're jealous of at work? In your family? Yes. In life? Yes. This is where jealousy will lead you to hatred. He became, the Bible says, like a madman. It consumed him. David tried to soothe him with the harp. Remember, he had David come and play the harp to relax him. And it was therapy. And it wouldn't even work anymore. It made him even more mad because here he is up there. There he is. There's that. I brought him into my palace and now he's the most popular. He's getting all the attention. And he hated it. So, the begrudging foe was King Saul. Saul, even in verse 11, he became so angry that he hurled his spear at David. Wait a minute. Verse 11 says, Saul cast the javelin for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. How can it come to this? How has it come to this? <clears throat> King Saul now was afraid of David because the Lord was with David. Saul banned David from the palace. He demoted him to be in charge of just 1,000 soldiers. David continued to have success in all he did. The king gave David Michael, his daughter, who loved David very much. David's soldiers were always most successful. They were well prepared. They were better than all the other soldiers because God blessed David. And David did everything he did with excellence. His notoriety grew even more. Even though he was demoted, it, it, everything Saul did backfired. Everything. And that's what happens when you give your heart in to jealousy and hatred, and evil, and pride, and wickedness. Everything begins to fall apart. It all backfired. Saul pretended to love David, but secretly in his heart he hated him, and he wanted him dead. Chapter 19, finally, verse 1, Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should kill. He finally came out. He finally said, all right, everybody come in. You know, the guy David, I want him dead. It finally came to that. That's the result of unbridled jealousy. As it grows and festers. And you don't address it. Jonathan was still David's best friend. They maintained their vow, their covenant. Jonathan warned David of Saul's plan. He said, you need to flee, David. You need to find a safe place because the king has made it official now 
He's after you. He's got He's got a price on your head. I will keep you informed of His plans, but go hide. Jonathan even defended David before his father. Jonathan spoke with his own father and said, Dad, what has David ever done to you except save you and deliver our country? What has he ever done to you? That's all we hear. Jonathan begged his father not to kill him. And he reminded him of David's nobility. There's no reason to murder this innocent man. He's our champion. So Saul, at that point, changed his mind. And we don't know, I can't see into a man's heart. We don't know the sincerity of this. He felt ashamed of himself. So Jonathan told David and they returned to the palace together. Saul said, you know, you're right, my bad. My bad. So Saul, Jonathan went down there and said, David, it's good, we're good, come on back. There was another battle. David's soldiers won, of course, over the Philistines. And when David returned, Saul was even more jealous again. Number three, the besetting fear. David had to begin to fear for his life. His lifestyle had to change. His location, everything changed for David. He had a besetting fear. King Saul throws his javelin at David again, verse 10. David was playing his harp for Saul. The king, in a fit of rage, hurled his spear at David and tried to kill him again. David escaped unhurt. David fled to Ramah at this time, verse 18, and stayed with the old prophet Samuel for safety. Michael tried or tricked Saul to help David escape. Everybody's. Saul's the bad guy. Everybody loves David and is helping him and his wife and his family and his friends. And here's Saul. His rage, his anger, his jealousy. David and Jonathan come up with a plan. And it, was, it was a terrible situation. And so David and Jonathan secretly went, met. This is in verse 19. And David was... David was visibly fearful at this time when he was talking to Jonathan. And he said, Jonathan, you're my best friend, man. What have I... Why? What have I done to your father except help him? Why is this all happening to me? And David is, is, is visibly fearful for his... Well, you would be too if the king was trying to kill you. David felt great fear for his life. As we enter into verse 20. At the, and, and so they came up with a plan. There's going to be a feast, a three day feast, and Jonathan's at the palace. And so Jonathan and David met and said, At the second day of the feast, David asked Jonathan to see if it was safe for him to return to the palace. He said, I want you to fill out your father, fill out the king, and, and see how things are. Is it okay? Is he calmed down? Can I come back to the palace? My family, my friends. On the third day, I will signal you what to do. So David hid in the field as he and Jonathan had planned. King Saul was still very angry. In fact, King Saul turned his anger to Jonathan at this point because he knew Jonathan was protecting David. And King Saul became angry with his own son. At the feast the second day, Saul asked, Where's David? Where's his? Here's his spot. Where is he? Because I really want to kill him. So where is he, Jonathan? Saul was furious that David wasn't there. Saul lashed out at Jonathan. You'll never be the king as long as David lives. Bring him to me so I can kill him. Jonathan, I'm looking out for you. You're going to be the king, but as long as David lives, he will be the more popular one. I'm doing you a favor. Saul actually threw his spear at his own son in a rage. Jonathan saw the sad truth about his father's intentions. And at that moment, Jonathan said, this is my father. He tried to kill me. Not only David, but me. The sign of the arrow. The third day as planned, Jonathan went to the field where David was hiding. He shot an arrow far beyond the boy who was to retrieve his arrow. 
The boy went to retrieve it, and Jonathan said, Run, hurry, don't wait. And he gave the signal to David. David came out of his hiding place. Jonathan ran to meet him. The friends' hearts were filled with sadness. They knew David would have to leave. Things aren't good at the palace and they're not going to get better. And Jonathan came to say goodbye to his best friend, David. They embraced, thankful for such a wonderful, amazing friendship. We will keep our promise to be friends forever and care for each other's families. Nothing has changed, David. Nothing's changed, Jonathan. Remember that vow that we made? We're going to keep our covenant. Then they parted. Jonathan sadly back to the palace. David fled off in another direction. Look at verse 42. Let me close with this. Verse 42 of chapter 20. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace. These are your best friends. For as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Bidding farewell, sad goodbyes. In conclusion, let me make some observations. This is an amazing story. It's a story about a story about a lot of things. It's a story about rage and jealousy and hatred and fear and insecurity. It's a story about how friends can turn on each other, even family members. You see how Satan can enter into our hearts through jealousy and rage and insecurity? It's a story about two friends that had the same heart. And they said, God, you have brought us together. We love our God. We love our Israel. We love each other and our families. And we're going to make a promise. I got your back. I got you. When you're having a hard time, I got you. When I'm having a hard time, you got me. When I'm messing up and sliding off, you're going to come help me. You're going to rescue me. When I need somebody to keep me straight. David and Jonathan were great A couple of observations I've done. Do you have somebody like that in your life right now? Other than your spouse? Amen. You need these kind of friends. Well, yeah, you know, I got buddies. We go to my me and my buddies, we go out and hang out and you know we play ball together, we do okay, that's cool. I'm talking about this kind of friend. I'm talking about somebody who's gonna call you out when you're messing up. Talk about somebody that's going to keep you straight. Talk about somebody that's going to encourage you when you're really depressed. Somebody that's going to show up when everybody else leaves. Amen. You need to find you a friend like that. Pray for that friend. God, I need somebody in my life. They trusted each other. They depended on each other. This is a perfect example of what friendship should be from the Scripture. So I want you to do something today. I want you to examine. I want you to look right now into your life. I want you to identify who your friends are. I want you to ask yourself this question. Are these the kind of friends that I need to be hanging around with? Do they love my God as much as I love God? Am I going to be impacted in a positive way by the people I hang out with after work? Here it is. Two verses I close with. First of all, Proverbs 17, 17, as I talk about friendship. Listen. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You know, I want to tell you something. A really good friend isn't always just going to pat you on the back. Oh, you're great. Oh, yeah, you're awesome. Well, your really, really good friend isn't going to always tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. In fact, sometimes they're going to tell you something you don't want to hear. And sometimes you may feel like saying, Hey, get out of my face! That's none of your business! Well, you know what? I love you. And I'm making it my business. Because I care enough to confront you about that. 
Are you that kind of friend to somebody? And do you have that person in your life? A true friend loves at all times. And then let's go down to chapter 18. I'm in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. You've heard this verse. This is not a new verse to you, but it's a powerful verse. A man that hath friends must what? Show himself friendly. Well, I don't understand. I just ain't got no friends. Well, maybe because you never get out of your house. Maybe. Do you have a church home? Well, no, you know, I ain't got no. Well, do you have. Well, uh... you got to make an effort sometimes. In order to have a friend, you got to be a friend. Don't sit and pout and look in the mirror and get depressed. Well, I ain't got no friend. Well, go find you some. Or you can sit in your house for the next 30 years and get on the dial only. That's bad. I don't mean to be. <laughs> a man that has friends must show himself friendly. Make an effort. But here's the best part, okay? I, I, I'm a, here's the best part. Wherever you go in the Bible, Wherever you go, whatever story, Old Testament, New Testament, whatever book, whoever the characters are, it always comes back to this. And you know what it is? It's grace. It always comes back to grace. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. There it is. There you go. Two things. Get you a good friend. Go find you a good friend. Quit pouting and, and quit withdrawing yourself and go out there and make some friends. Now, let me just throw this out. I'm, I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I need some friends and I probably need some good friends. So I think I'm going to go hang out at the bar see if I can find me some good friends. Seriously? Is that where you're going to go to find friends? This kind of friends? I'm just going to throw this out there. Just a shot in the dark. Hey, church might be a good place to start. Just throw that out there. You need to get good friends in your life that you can be accountable to. Like David and Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan saved David's life on many occasions. You need somebody that's going to be saving your life. Now, they may not save you from somebody throwing a javelin at you, but they can save you from depression and frustration and jealousy Amen. and all that stuff that we deal with every day. Preach, preach. And after that, you need to find the friend. Hey, you need a friend, and you really need the friend. He's the one that sticks closer than a brother, closer than a Jonathan, closer than any family member you have. He will never forsake you or leave you. That's grace and that's our God. Amen. You need to make that choice today. Godly friends, all of us, I love this church because I have a band of brothers in this church. We've knelt. We've met at the fire pit. We've gone to Atlanta. We've worked together. We've sweated together. We've cooked together. We've prayed together. These men got my back. I'm totally, I believe totally that these men in this church have got my back. I'm committed to that. And I got theirs. And that's what we need. That's the kind of friend that you need in your life. Trust, respect, honesty, loyalty, safety, accountability. You know what the enemy says? Satan? He says this. Well, you know what? Uh, just, just don't go. You know, just stay home. I don't have any friends. Just withdraw. Put yourself in your own little world. Put a wall up. Get in a bubble. Yep. And you'll die. And you'll die lonely. That's what the enemy wants to happen to you. 
That's His plan for your future. Get up. Get out of your house. Get with some good people that love Jesus and get on with your life. Amen. If you have the Lord Jesus in your life and you know Him as your Savior, He will be your BFF. And, and you don't have to go to His house. You don't have to call Him up. He's here. Wherever you are, He's there. Walk with Him. Talk with Him. Tell Him your secrets. Tell Him your frustrations. Tell Him your problems. Tell Him your troubles. And know that He understands. Because He's your BFF. He can protect you when no one else can. He can comfort you in sorrow. He can guide you and counsel you. He promises never to leave you or forsake you. I say this lovingly. All of us deal with loneliness. Some of you are dealing with that right now. It's really hard. I say this with all the love and grace that I can muster. You don't have to be alone. That's right. You don't have to be alone. He's a friend that stick us closer than a brother. Number one, get a BFF and a good one and make a vow. Number two, let God be your best friend. Why don't you bow your heads and close your eyes? I'm going to pray as we do every Sunday. And I want to pray for myself and I want to pray for you. And I want to pray specifically in those two areas. You hear it and you say, Pastor, I, need, I do need somebody. Man, I'm, I'm lonely. I really am lonely. It's very real. I mean, i got some friends, but we don't have anything spiritually in common. I mean, when we hang out, we're really not doing good things. I just really need a Jonathan. I need a David in my life. And I need to be that. And God, I need to be more proactive. And I need to be more aggressive. And I need to be a good friend. I understand. You know what, you know what I want to do? I want to go to my room and close the door and be alone. And there's a time for that. Sometimes. You just need to be around somebody else. So, Pastor, I just want to, I just want to pray. God, help me to find those kind of people in my life. God, thank you for giving me best friends that help me spiritually to become the person you've called me to be. And secondly, God, I just want to know you so much. God, I, I, I'm saved. But man, I just, I just, I'm not really close to you. I'm not, I'm not a really close friend. God, I want to walk with you and talk with you and, and relate to you and cry to you. God, I just want you to be my best friend today because I need you when I'm lonely. I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer today. I'm going to pray close for all of us. But I want you to think about this concept of friendship. And I want you to to do something about it today and this week. Dear God, I'm, I'm glad we got to be at church today. God, I'm thrilled to have this family, this church family. God, I thank You for these people in this house right now. These, these are Your people. We're not perfect people, but we're Your church. God, I thank You for these people in this room. Thank You for this family that is the community church. God, continue to build a bond in our hearts for each other. A loyalty for each other. And, and Lord, help us to come back to grace. And know that, that You are our friend that sticks even closer than a brother. Thank You for freedom and safety. Thank You for a place we don't have to feel intimidated because of the clothes we wear. God, thank You that we have a home. And we can be together. Thank you for this church and for these people. And thank you for being my best friend. 
Lord Jesus, we love you. And we thank you. Now, God, help us this week. Help us to, to make a difference. Help us to respond to you in obedience. Thank you for teaching us something new today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me thank you for coming today. Uh, I, I want to close by doing this. We don't take an offering. If you give to the Lord, you can put it in that black uh, box over there on the thing. If you give a tithe, uh, or if you give offerings above the tithe, and if you didn't put something in the jar, that's between you and God, but you do that in obedience to Him. I want to say this to you. This church, our church is not perfect. I get that. I get that. Because we're in it, mainly. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. Just, I just want to share this with my heart. This is a safe place. It's a safe place. Nobody's going to judge you here. I don't care about your past. Oh, Pastor, well, you, you just don't... I don't know, don't need to know, don't care. Because of grace. It's gone. It's under the blood. You're safe. This is a place where you can be a family. And so, I, I love the fact that God has let me be here in this place with you people. This is a special place. And God's doing special things. So, if you're our guest or if you've been visiting, thank you for coming. You are welcome here. You will be loved here. And God bless you. And you can come back and see us anytime. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock. Have a great week. Thank you.